Listen to the difference between these two guitar cables. One of these cables costs $85 and the other one costs $10. Is cable A or cable B the expensive one? Leave your answer in the comments below. Okay, I have to admit this was a very unfair test, but don't be mad at me because I'm trying to prove a point. Cable A was the cheap cable, and cable B was the expensive cable. What I didn't tell you is that there is another very important difference between these two cables. The cheap cable is 5 feet long, while the expensive cable is 25 feet long. You may have noticed that the short cable sounded a bit brighter, while the long cable sounded quite dark. I learned the reason behind this from audio engineer Eric Valentine, who's worked with Queens of the Stone Age, Good Charlotte, Third Eye Blind, Smash Mouth, and many, many others throughout the course of his career. I met Eric at an AES convention, where he was showing off some of the equipment that his company Undertone Audio produces. One thing that really piqued my interest was this, the Vericap instrument cable. It's an instrument cable with a variable capacitance switch. See, the primary reason those two guitar cables sounded so different in the demonstration was that one is much longer than the other. Let's make the test a bit more fair by listening to the three foot version of the expensive cable with the 25 foot version. Why does cable length have this effect? Well, the capacitance will increase with length of the cable, which of course brings up the next question, what is capacitance? Capacitance describes the ability for an electrical system to store an electric charge. If we go to the manufacturer's website, we can see that the capacitance of this cable is 130 picofarads per meter, or 39.7 picofarads per foot. In a sense, a guitar cable can act as a capacitor controlled by its length. But before you go pulling the cable stretcher out of your closet, stick around because I'll demo the Vericap cable, which is probably a better solution for you. Before we get there though, let's take a closer look at capacitance as it's a very important topic in audio. This circuit currently shows a DC or direct current source on the left and a 240 microfarad capacitor in the center, which is currently disconnected. When we flip the switch to include the capacitor, the capacitor will need some time to store up a charge from the 5 volt DC source. It will also take time to discharge when we flip the switch to the off position. When the 240 microfarad capacitor is replaced with a 480 microfarad capacitor, it takes more time to store up a full charge. This is similar to increasing the length or capacitance of the guitar cable. However, the guitar outputs AC, alternating current. Let's switch the DC source to an AC source and observe the impact of capacitance. By the way, I learned about this visualization tool from Matthew Johnson's YouTube channel. I'll leave a link to that video below. Make sure to go over there and show some appreciation in the comments. We'll start with a 10 Hertz square wave, which alternates 10 times per second. The graph is slowed down so that we can actually see what's happening. Remember, the capacitor takes some time to charge. If we increase the frequency to 20 Hertz, it barely allows enough time for the capacitor to charge before switching back. When we double the frequency again to 40 Hertz, there isn't enough time to facilitate a full charge, and the frequency is attenuated by the capacitor. The higher the frequency, the more this attenuation will occur. You can see that here with an 80 Hertz signal, and even more so with a 160 Hertz signal. For this reason, capacitors are used in analog low-pass filters, which are tools that remove energy above a particular frequency. Increasing the capacitance moves the cutoff frequency of the filter downward, and the length of the instrument cable has a similar effect. As Eric Valentine pointed out in our conversation, once those higher frequencies are filtered by the capacitor that is our cable, those frequencies are gone forever. You can't recover those higher frequencies with additive EQ because there's nothing there. Meanwhile, you could use a low pass or a high cut filter 
after recording to remove any excess high frequencies if you are using a low capacitance cable to record. Does this mean a low capacitance cable is always better? Well, like pretty much everything in audio, it depends. There's something to be said about being intentional about the tone from the very beginning of the recording process, especially if you don't plan on reamping your guitar later on. That's why Undertone Audio developed the very cap instrument cable to allow you to adjust the capacitance of the cable to suit the guitar or bass tone you're going for in the context of a specific project without needing to switch physical cables. To hear this effect, I'll use a bass and a guitar with passive pickups, as you won't hear this effect with active pickups. Let me know what you think in the comments below. When dealing with instrument cables, it's best to keep them relatively short, but sometimes you need to run the signal from an instrument over a long distance. In this video that's on your screen now, I'll show you how to do that with a tool called a DI box. I'll see you there.